Our resident lawyer, Despina Priala of boutique law firm Priala Legal in Runaway Bay is with us every Thursday to offer her legal expertise by providing some general advice on the latest hot topics and of course having experience spanning more than 25 years in the area of property and commercial law. She joins us now. Good morning, Despina. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Brock. Good morning. So this topic this morning is all about finding love later in life. Sounds very romantic and beautiful. Say you're retired, you live solo in a house you own, you then find the one. So you both maybe want to share your property, you want to get married maybe, change your will. To me, this sounds like a very messy legal situation, or it could be. Is that is that the case? It can be. I think it can be for anyone. But when I saw this topic, you wanted to have a chat about it. Mm. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, we act for a lot of clients um, as they get older, of course, and um, we, we look after a lot of their needs. And one of those is estate planning. But interestingly enough, when you talked about retirement and moving into perhaps uh, communities like retirement villages or particularly over 50s resorts and land lease communities, as they're commonly known now, uh, it's an interesting area to, to sort of have a chat about because when people move into these communities and they're great communities, uh, and uh, typically there are people for over 55s, uh, they live in and they own their own home. So they purchase a home within the resort, within the community, and they own that home. So they don't own the land, they pay site rent, that's how these resorts work, and they own the home. The home is considered a chattel, of course, but it is their asset. Uh, so they have purchased it with their own money. So in these communities, you have a mixture of people in that particular age bracket from 50 or 55 upwards. So you've got married couples, you've got single people living there. Sometimes you have uh, single people living with registered carers that they need as well. So there's a variety of different people and mix of relationships. And sometimes what I've seen over the years is of course that People who are living there in those communities that are single, particularly, um, they meet other people in those communities who are also single and they get involved and uh, form a relationship, mm -hmm. which is nice to see and there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But from a legal point of view, naturally, that's where I'm coming from, a lot of the people uh, that live in these communities often don't think about the legalities of their estate planning um, and, and what's really involved because the home that they have, and typically these people, this is their main asset. So when they move later in life and they purchase these homes, it does become one of their main assets or the main asset that they have. Mm -hmm. And it can be quite valuable. I mean, it depends on the resort. It could be 150,000. Some of them are a million dollars. Um, oh, some yes, of them can indeed. be quite uh, expensive and quite valuable. Mm -hmm. So it is an asset to deal with when you pass away like any asset, like dealing with uh, money in the bank, investment, shares, cars, jewellery. So it's the same situation. So when you're, you own the home yourself and you're in these resorts, um, you have signed all the documentation yourself. You are the homeowner and you are noted on the site agreement that you sign with the operator and you are the one paying site rent. So when you meet someone uh, and you form a relationship, uh, what happens then if you decide to live together in your home mm. and the other person sells their home in the resort? So that creates an interesting situation because you then have a couple living in a home that's owned by one person and does the other person then have an interest in that home mm. if the home owner passes away first? And it gets a bit messy, as you can imagine, because um, say you've got you know um, uh, a female on the one hand who owns a home, who then has a relationship with a man. The man then actually live, comes and lives with her in her home, and they live together. But he doesn't. He's not actually the homeowner mm. on the paperwork, mm. right? He didn't purchase the home, but he lives there. So then he has perhaps an equitable interest. So if the woman passes away first, and she might have adult children who then want to deal with her estate and want to sell the home, then the person living there, we call that person the occupant, um, from a legal point of view, does that person have any rights? Do they have a right to perhaps stay in the home? Um, do they have a right to some of the proceeds of sale when the home is sold? 
So this is where it is really critical for these people to have a will in place and to update it regularly as changes happen in their life. Everyone has to have a will, but particularly as you get older and you do live in these communities and it's an asset that you own, it could be a valuable asset, it is your home and you own it. And if you have changes in your life where you do form relationships and that's great and fine, but you've got to look after yourself and you've got to protect yourself from an estate planning point of view. Of course. So when it comes to updating your will, of how often do you think people should do that just when these big changes happen or is it a six monthly period what would you suggest so what I say to my clients is you've made a will that's great we don't just stick it in a drawer for 20 years and never look at it so what we do is we put it in a safe and secure place and we have safe custody in our office for clients so we usually hold the originals clients are given a copy so they keep it in a safe place and perhaps just bring it out every one or two years just okay. to have a look at it just to see Am I still comfortable with the terms? Do I need to change anything? But if something happens in your life, right, a change, for example, you form a relationship, for example, you divorce, you separate, um, for example, someone dies close to you that mm. might have been in the will, um, you sold a major asset, um, your financial position's different, you might have lost everything, you might have gained, you might have received an inheritance. So there are a lot of things that may happen to you through your life and when those things do, you need to look at the will, particularly if you become divorced um, or you subsequently marry because your wills can then be revoked automatically by law. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any development in your life, you should at the very least take out your will and just review it. But going back to the lend lease communities, these people, of course, that are living in these communities particularly should have their estate plan in place, but don't underestimate the fact that it's a home only and a chattel and you don't own the land, that for some reason you shouldn't take that into account in your will. Definitely you should, and you should note it in the will that you own this home and your home upon your death is to go to person X or persons X, Y, Z, right? And particularly if you are in a relationship, like I said before, where that person is living with you, but they're not the homeowner, mm -hmm. right? You need to perhaps think about making mention of that in the will as well. Of course. A and whether you should say, well, this person should receive an interest or shouldn't receive an interest for a particular reason. Yeah. 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 And what if, <laughs> I'm talking worst case scenario, you don't have a will, you die unexpectedly, you're not married to this person you're living with, what could happen? Well, it gets messy. Really messy? Really messy. It can get messy with a will, but, but not as much, but uh, because of people can make claims, etc. and if they're not interested, it's not protected. But dying without a will gets very messy, particularly in that situation, because then you have to go by the intestacy rules in the particular state you died or where the home is, is kept. And uh, that's not perhaps what you want at the end of the day, because those intestacy rules are set in stone. They're, they're, they're rules that aren't flexible. Of course. Um, they're set in, in the legislation. So, you know, your family members will have to abide by them to a very large extent. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Talking Law with Despina Priala. Every Thursday we have our resident lawyer, Despina, in the studio here, Talking Law. And in a few weeks we're going to have a very uh, special edition of the show. This one will be all about you. And if you have any questions about the law or if you want legal advice, this is your time. We're dedicating a whole segment to giving you the answers that you want to know right here on The Breakfast Show. Like to get in touch, ask your questions to Despina direct on 0400-141-269 or email your query to breakfast at radio97.com.au. Now, coming up, if you want to buy a property with someone, uh, listen up to this next segment. Uh, we'll be discussing the difference between signing as a joint tenant or a tenant in common. But what can go wrong next? <laughs> 